All right, so I'm back to work on the Atlas lathe. I've got the uh, feet in the parts washer, and I'm uh, gonna work on scrubbing those up a little. Well, those cleaned up nice. The paint was in uh, pretty rough shape on one of them. Uh, there's still quite a bit of original paint on the other one. There's still some dirt in there that if I scrub a little harder, I can get that out. I haven't decided yet whether or not I wanna do that, because I mean, if I was looking to repaint these legs, then I'd wanna get every speck of dirt off of there and then clean it with uh, you know, some prep solvent. Um, but I don't think I want to get that crazy with the, uh, I'm not doing a restoration on this lathe. I'm thinking I'm going to leave that to the next owner because I'm probably going to end up not keeping this particular lathe. Now I happen to have the tail stock off of the lathe right here on the bench because I wanted to remove the uh, handle here and wash it to see if I can get a number off of it. The reason why is because the uh, one of the handles on the uh, apron is, is has been replaced. Or what I meant to say was both handles have been replaced. This handle here is a, a door, a crank, window crank handle off of an old car. Um, the good news about that is it was actually made up over the original handle. So the original handle's still on there, what's left of it, and it broke and was replaced with this uh, setup here. So if I take this all apart, I should be able to get to that handle. And then this handle here, uh, this is a solid aluminum piece that they made a hand, uh, the previous owner made a handle out of. It's actually uh, pretty well executed. Um, but from the research that I was able to uh, uncover, it appears that this original, the original handle that went on here is identical to the handle on the tailpiece. In other words, this handle here should be identical to the one that's missing uh, and was replaced with the aluminum on the other one there. And most of these handles are stamped somewhere with a part number. Almost every part on this lathe is stamped with a part number, which is kind of uh, handy. For instance, uh, this is stamped, I believe that's a 9-6. That's the uh, base part of the tailpiece. You get a 9-5 right here. That's the, this part of the tailpiece. So uh, that's going to make it... Uh, easier to try and track down some of the parts. Um, handles, hand wheels abound on eBay, used hand wheels. But the interesting thing is that this being one of the first lathes has an earlier version of the hand wheel. Apparently, not only did they uh, change the part number on the hand wheel over time, but also they changed the design slightly. And in many cases, I think they kept the number the same. So when I was looking on eBay, I saw what supposedly is a hand wheel for, um, for a lathe of this vintage. And I saw two different listings for hand wheels that supposedly are the same part number, but had different styles to them. And I'll explain that in a minute. But for the moment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, uh, looks like there's a locking nut and another nut behind it off. All right, so I removed the hand wheel. Uh, another interesting thing is this, uh, this part of the, the handle on the hand wheel is actually loose. I'm not sure how that's supposed to be fastened. Um, on an early parts diagram that I have for an Atlas lathe, it actually shows a separate part number for this handle part right here. And then, of course, there was a part number for the hand wheel, which would come with this handle. So apparently they figured that if you wore in the whole hand wheel, you weren't going to reuse this handle. And if you were just, if your hand wheel was good and you just accidentally broke off this handle, you could, you could order the handle separately. So there was a separate part number for that. And there actually are some of those floating around on the internet also. Um, this one appears to have just been stuck in there. And then this backside is almost like peened over or filed over or something. And that's the only thing that's keeping it in there. So I'm not going to mess with that. But I'm going to clean this wheel right now. All right, there's the wheel cleaned up. Still remnants of paint on it. Um, don't see any numbers at first glance, but I'm going to go look at it under magnification. Well, I can't find any numbers on this. I checked on the spokes on the inside and the edge of the wheel on the back and the front. I checked on that uh, barrel part right there. and I don't see any numbers on it anywhere. So if they were on there, maybe they've worn off. I'm not sure. Um, so what I was saying before about there being another version of this is I, I've seen versions of this wheel online that had spokes that weren't quite as flat as these 
and didn't have this detail, this rib, this strengthening rib on the back. It seems like either later, well this is so early that if this is an original hand weld, which it certainly appears to be, um, it seems like later ones what they did was they uh, decided to forego including this little rib to strengthen it and just made these spokes beefier in the first place. This is uh, this whole thing is this casting of this uh, Zamic metal, I'm pretty sure. So if I were to drop this right now, I could easily probably crack it and damage it. So got to be careful with these parts. So I'll keep an eye out for one of these uh, hand wheels that I think is a match for this one. But uh, before I uh, commit to that, I wanted to make sure that it's going to fit. So I, I wanted to make sure that they are, in fact, the same size shaft. So I took off this uh, homemade deal that uh, was on there on the carriage and lo and behold now that I look at it more closely it appears that what someone did and I think it may have been my old machinist friend who passed on looks like what he did was he actually used the center of the broken hand wheel I think that's actually part of the original hand wheel because when I turned it over on this side it, it looks like it's the same material so it looks like what he did was he he broke off the uh, when the hand wheel broke, he uh, turned this down smooth, turned this uh, piece of aluminum, and uh, bored a hole in the center and pressed this in there. It's a press fit. Unless he epoxied it in, but I don't see any sign of that. I think he just pressed it in. So he's got this washer there, but yeah, that's pressed in from the back side. That's pretty slick. So anyways, uh, check and see that that's going to fit right on. Put that right on the tail stock. And double check, but I'm pretty sure that there's no reason that that shouldn't be a... Uh, oops. I want to use... One. Ah, there it goes. There goes the Woodruff key. Anyways. All right, so that's... That's a winner. All right, so we're going to... Be all set there. Well, tailstock cleaned up nice. Well, this is cleaning up pretty well. Uh, this is that whole bracket assembly with the counter shaft. I cleaned up the counter shaft. It's amazing how much oil was on those pulleys. The belts are probably slipping pretty bad. The belts themselves are pretty saturated with oil, so probably have to crash those. Um, cleaned up that uh, bracket assembly for the gears with the uh, switch box for the first neutral lever for uh, carriage drive. I still haven't cleaned that up and I still haven't figured out how that compound drive works. I have to check that out. These are the feet that I cleaned up last time I was down here. I noticed uh, now that they've dried off I've missed the underside completely so I'll get that one again. Well, I think I'll call it a night. I got uh, I got the headstock uh, spindle support there, bracket, whatever you want to call it. That's uh, all cleaned up. I redid the feet. I did the bracket for the compound drive. I did the compound drive. I did the uh, the cover with the switch box. So uh, I don't have too much left to do. Of course, the ways are going to be tricky. Well, the bed. I should say the bed. I'm going to figure out a way to clean the bed up and then uh, I'm going to want to take that chuck off of the spindle assembly before I clean the spindle assembly up. And then I've got of course the whole uh, the uh, carriage, the apron carriage assembly there with the compound on it. Um, probably going to take that compound off for the purposes of cleaning. And then uh, I could start some, oh, and of course the, the lead screw. And then I could start some reassembly and lubrication. All right, I'm back at cleaning up, uh, putting back together the Atlas lathe. And I got the bed here in the uh, wash tank, and I just finished cleaning off this whole side right here. Now I'm going to flip it around end over end, clean that end off. I already cleaned off the bench top. Uh, came up pretty good. 
there was some oil on there that needed to be cleaned up. So hopefully I can start reassembling this tonight. This right here really illustrates uh, the difference. This is the before and after. <laughs> All right, I've finished cleaning the bed and I just uh, wiped it down with the rag and now I'm going to uh, transfer it over to the bench here and install the feet and the feet both have uh, the same three bolt hole pattern on the top but there is a difference uh, on the bottom here this one only has one hole and this one has two and that's how I know that this is the one that goes down the headstock end where more of the weight is and this is the one down at the tailstock end I've now reattached both feet and uh, I know I've mentioned it before but in case you're just joining this video series and didn't pick it up from the beginning uh, one of the unique things that sets this lathe aside from its later uh, the later models is that it has these uh, unique splayed feet which were uh, changed out uh, to a more box like foot later on uh, there's a part number on here 9-150X and this one's a 9 150, and I assume that that just denotes tailstock versus headstock end. All right, let's flip it over. Now, this is, of course, called the bed of the lathe, and this top surface right here is called, uh, are called the ways. And uh, one of the ways you can tell how much wear there is on a lathe is um, if you look real carefully at the, uh, the ways on the side you're going to be able to see it in this light but there are these little striation marks from when they originally machined the uh, the ways and there's an absence of them in this area right here which makes sense because basically you can see from these big damaged areas here where the uh, jaws were too far open on the chuck more than likely and it struck the ways and damaged them here so we know this is where our chuck sits and so most of your work is done right in this area right here and uh, not a lot is done way down here at this end so consequently you end up with more, way, more wear from the carriage moving back and forth in this area right here and with the headstock assembly removed you can see underneath this area here there's virtually no wear because uh, there is uh, nothing nothing travels on this so you can actually just see those little striations or those little lines I was talking about right here and you can just kinda see a ghost of them in this area here and then as we get further down right in this area here they pretty much disappear completely and then when we get way down this end here you can actually start to see them come back in again right around right around here now on the Hendy the serial number for the lathe was actually located right on the way somewhere and I just took a good look now that I've cleaned this up and sure enough right down here at this end I can just make out the serial number I've got a little bit of crud right there let me get a uh, scotch bright pad. Oh, no, actually, I don't even need a scotch bright pad. It's cleaning up with my finger. I want to get a little something anyways. Well, upon cleaning it up, it sure looks like that's a 2858 that I see there. Well, I'll see what I can find out about uh, the exact year of manufacture. I'm pretty sure this is 1932 based on the research that I did and the fact that uh, shortly after they started building this lathe, they did a couple of design changes that uh, really changed the look of it. 